This is like my second video that has a somewhat clickbaity thumbnail, so hold your horses, hold your horses, hold on. For proof, I'm an avid enjoyer of Chainsaw Man. I'm completely caught up with part two of the manga, and I have all the volumes in English. You could say that, you could say that I'm ahead. Ahead? Get it? Ahead? Too soon? Okay. I'm also working on a really cool Chainsaw Man cosplay. I've seen a lot of cosplays online, but I haven't seen one that controls the speed of the chainsaws. God fucking damn it! The person I wanted to talk about in this video is the one and only, horny shonen character that so many prepubescent teens to 20-something year olds like to relate themselves to, Denji. And while it's funny to say from time to time, trust me, I've done my fair share, I slowly started to realize that's not always the case. Like honestly guys, hold yourself to higher standards. You're not like Dennis over here, okay? Unless it's Quan Chi, then I, I totally understand. And while I agree Danny's character development is top tier, not really spoon feeding it like most do, he is by all means not a good person. And in my opinion, if he was not the main character, many people would relate him to the purple guy from My Hero Academia. We just give him a pass because he's ultimately the person we try to root for in the show. But going back to that topic, why is Dennis not hated? There has to be a difference between him and the other guy. At the beginning, he doesn't seem like the character that has the ability to change or learn from his mistakes, but towards the end of part one, you start to realize he acts exactly the same. But the point is, Denji is not a good person, and it could easily be mistaken as him not learning anything. But that's why I love him as a character. Let me explain. Let's get the easy one out of the way, which is his lustful and lewd nature. Oh my god, he's just like me, oh my god, it's so real, oh my god, he's so real. Come on guys, hold yourself to higher standards, I beg you. But getting back on topic, Denji is consistently known to be one of the most lustful characters in the show, especially in the beginning arcs where his main reasons for doing basically anything was for physical pleasure. Based. Sorry, 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 I just had to do it one more time, get it out of my system. If I keep doing that joke, it's undermining the whole point. Okay, I got it out of my system, let's keep going here. I'll try. <laughs> and while many people can see this constant seek of physical pleasure as just part of his character or a common anime trope, it goes a lot deeper than that. Just a heads up, spoilers if I haven't said it already, cool. Ever since he killed his father as a young child, he hasn't had any form of interaction, no one to really look up to. The only adult he interacted with was the mafia he was involved with, which obviously wasn't the best for his psyche. Even so, Chainsaw Man doesn't go with the trope where the bad guys take the main character under their wing and they change them for the better. Instead, the mafia treats him like a dog, forever bound to his father's debt. And after Denji gains the abilities of Chainsaw Man, the Dami Mami herself Makima was introduced into the picture. <laughs> The voices, the voices. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, get through the script. Get through the script, Lemoyne, come on, come on. Due to a lack of a parental figure, Makima became that for him. And because of Denji's lack of a proper childhood, the only way he was able to facilitate this care for Makima was in the form of lustful acts. Thinking about it a little bit further, it's honestly devastating and sad to realize why he acts the way he does. He doesn't really have any other conception on what human compassion is other than these extremes. And if he's not able to facilitate this passion to others, his care for them is completely absent. As to why or how he got this preconception, I'm sure it was facilitated by the little amount of interaction he had with the Mafia, but I feel it's not too important. The fact is, he only sees compassion in this way, and it's constantly seen throughout the show and series. One very strong aspect of Denji's character development can be seen in his perspective of family and human connections. At the beginning of the show, we see that Denji has always been isolated, only having Pochita as a form of family or connection. But after Pochita's death, Aki and Power slowly start to take over what Pochita gave him, a family. At the beginning of the show, the connections between these three characters were absolutely horrendous. But as the plot progresses, these three characters start to get along, and as much as they don't want to admit it, start caring for one another and their well-being. But sadly, the moment he formed these connections with them, Makima swiftly took this away leaving him again alone and isolated. With this, you think he would have more of an understanding of human connections and morals, right? Wrong. <laughs> Throughout his scenes in part two, he still does not really care too much about human life at all. Look at his introduction, where he chooses the life of a cat over a bus of homeless people and a car of 20 something year olds. You cannot make this shit up. It was, it was so funny. <laughs> it was so good. I thought it was gonna be like a girl right? Because like, it's Denji, but it was, it was a fucking cat. It was worse than that. Let me actually check if it was, if my facts are correct there. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. Wrong. I, I gave the wrong facts. It was one student 
versus a car of five old people, and he still chose to choose the cat. Sorry, I got my facts wrong there, but I'm glad I got it. I got my facts straight. Facts correct. All good. All swag. Um, next line. It may seem obvious that he doesn't have that connection with humanity or family, but you couldn't be more wrong. He discovers a newfound passion for family and the ones around him in the form of Makima's reincarnation, Nayuta. And before I go on, can I just say how awesome of a sibling duo they are? I'm an only child and seeing their interactions in part 2 is always so funny to me. For Christ's sakes, they have a fart chart! Is this- is this common for siblings? This is fucking awesome! While Nayuta is technically not a human, him having to care for someone to the point where he considers them family is great, especially since he still doesn't care too much about humans. In his own terrible way, he still has learned from part 1, and while it's not as well developed as many hope, it's shown in full display with Nayuta. Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the fucking money, shithead? The Big Lebowski follows the dude, an easygoing slacker who gets pulled into a series of bizarre events when he's mistaken for a millionaire with the same name. Initially seeking compensation for a rug, the dude finds himself embroiled in a convoluted plot involving kidnapping and ransom. Despite his passive nature, he's dragged along by chaotic circumstances, navigating through the absurdity of his own laid-back nature. And if you couldn't tell from his forgetful name, he could barely be considered a main character in my opinion getting into tons of conflicts that don't even revolve around him. Does this sound familiar? Well, it should, it's basically the whole plot of part 1. Reze was sent for his heart, the international assassins was there for only Makima, and the piece of resistance. Makima fabricating everything just for Denji to feel despair and break his contract with Pochita. While this does make him seem less important and undeveloped, I personally feel like this builds onto his character. From his upbringing to even his character as a whole during the series, he was never important. But this is why the scene where Denji defeating Makima is so powerful. This essentially nobody, someone that wasn't even the main focus the entire series, and has been constantly dragged through the mud, was able to defeat such a powerful threat. Another powerful scene that shows this is in his final talk with Kobeni. While hiding, Denji confides in Kobeni at his lowest, saying he doesn't even deserve the basic necessities in life and should be treated like a dog for what he's done. Ow! My knee. Kobeni responds with, isn't that just normal though? There's no such thing as a life free of bad things, except in your dreams. I personally believe that what she's saying is that the ups and downs in life are what makes life worth living, not this ideal world that Makima thinks is perfect. Without bad experiences, how can one have good experiences? This aspect is a great callback to when Makima and Denji go to the movies for the first time, and it's brought back up with their final interaction together. Denji says that bad movies are fine and Makima thinks that the world would be better off without him, which is a direct comparison to their perspectives on life. Sorry, it's just an awesome scene that I couldn't help but rant a little. But going back on track, how does he respond to this? By saying he wants a harem and lots of sex. But the point is, with this conversation, he starts to aspire for more in life and how he was able to get to this opinion about bad movies in the first place. The only reason why he only wanted the bare minimums is because he didn't even have them in the first place, not being able to look ahead of basic necessities. With this single conversation, Denji's character turns from being a person strung along by the plot to someone that has their own needs and wants, which is honestly beautiful. Fuck, I need a closing lip thing. Um, oh, I got one. Yo! Hello? Hey, sorry for calling you so late. I just had to talk to you about something real quick. I, 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 I called you? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, what's up? Nothing. I hate you. <laughs> With this, it may seem like he hasn't learned anything, but it's quite the opposite. Throughout the series, we are constantly shown Denji has somewhat grown from part 1, but habits due to his upbringings and from part 1 are still prominent. I hate dissing on my boy Denji, but we are shown time and time again that he is not a good person. But that's exactly what makes him a great character. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video. As per usual, I'll leave some clips for some audio. Enjoy. <laughs> 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 I got the leg <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it like forces you to like do like the at least for the camera. Fuck. Fuck. No. <laughs> Hell no. Get that shit off now. For more shit. I want more stuff. Everyone's happy. Everyone's good. Beds are broken. What the fuck? Why are you guys just tossing and turning everywhere, guys? Chill out. Okay. Types. I should follow me. You said slash follow me. No, I said follow me. But you said slash follow me. Type something. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? Do you blame me? Do you blame me?